What's going on, everybody? My name is How Vu, and this is the How Vu Moto Vlog. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I really appreciate it. Today's video, no real topics for discussion. I just wanted to share a couple things with you as it relates to my motorcycling journey. Eight months into my motorcycling journey, 2020 started at the beginning of this year. I'm going to share some eye candy with you guys, as always. I do want to share my helmet. I talked about it before, the Ruroc Atlas 2.0 helmet. I'm absolutely loving it. It looks killer. It's a carbon fiber helmet, so it's very light. And I put the GoPro on it via this little arm that attaches via a little plate and some adhesive, the 3M adhesive that comes with it. So when I don't feel like recording, I just snap the GoPro off and then thus just the plate remains, which is okay. You know, it doesn't kill me. It's very convenient to snap the thing in and out. But what I wanted to show you guys is probably the second best feature of this helmet. The first feature for me is the looks, and the second best feature is this Fidlock system. Most traditional helmets have some kind of D-ring system where you just have those two metal loops and, you know, you, you kind of loop your strap through over, under, and then button it. But this is a magnetic system, and it just latches into place magnetically it snaps and you hear a really nice click and it's just very pleasing to hear and feel the mechanism and once it's in there it's in there so securely but all you have to do is pull this tab i don't even understand how it works because it's in there so secure they've done tests where they just are holding up motorcycles with the strength of this fidlock buckle but all it takes is just pulling on that strap and you can even do it with gloves on and it's just an absolute breeze if I had to move back to the regular d-rings I honestly don't know what I would do because this is just so fantastic you could do it with your eyes closed and with the thickest gloves on I had to go for a nice ride today just getting out I I end work at 4 30 so I was looking out my window and I was checking you know I was thinking it, it's not really hot as it usually is at this time of day so I checked the weather and it was only 81 degrees and for Sacramento summer, that is amazing. That is beautiful weather. It's been about 100 degrees lately around the time I get off work. So 81 with the breeze, that's just perfect, perfect, perfect. I knew that I had to just get on the motorcycle and do a lap around town. Here's the state capital of California. Beautiful day, beautiful building, beautiful palm trees. And, you know, no nowhere to go in mind. I did have to get gas, so I filled up some gas. And on that topic... Guys, for you motorcycle riders, for you newbies out there, or for you experienced riders alike, is getting gas always an awkward situation? I feel like I look very cool with the helmet and the CBR 500R just cruising around town, but when I have to stop to get gas, I feel so awkward, and I have to, like, scrunch my arms up and, like, bend and contort, and I'm kind of hovering over the gas tank to see that I'm not squirting it everywhere, which I have done, by the way, my first motorcycle there was, I just, I squeezed the trigger a little too hard and I, it's just gas went all over the tank. It was just a mess. In the greater scheme of things, it could have been worse, but um, definitely getting gas is always this awkward experience. So I've learned now to position the bike so that the kickstand is facing closer to the pump. Before, just as a creature of habit, I would just pull up to the pump and, you know, the bike would lean away from the pump, which would make it, I guess, just a little bit harder, a tiny, tiny bit harder. So now I lean it towards the pump and that way I'm, you know, I'm getting a better leverage over it. But still, I'm not that tall of a person and it's just, I take my gloves off to do the gas. I keep my helmet on. I put the shield up and I, I'm pretty sure I feel really dorky when I fill up the gas. So I don't know about you guys, but, you know, I'm always having to make sure that the nozzle is pointed in the correct way so that, you know, little droplets of gas are not spitting up at me and just getting all over the tank. And it's been a learning experience. It doesn't happen that often. You know, I don't have to fill up gas that often because it's so good on gas, but it's definitely an experience there. Definitely don't look too cool. Maybe I'll practice filling up gas at home in the bathroom. You know, I'll just put on my helmet and I'll use like a hairbrush or something and pretend that's the gas pump and just, you know, practice my gas pose to make sure I look super cool when I'm filling up my gas. But anyways, guys, in all seriousness, just riding around, enjoying myself, enjoying the sound of the engine, like I said, just soaking up all this free stuff that comes with, with motorcycling, just enjoying the experience. And for me, part of the experience is uh, riding with without the shield down. If you guys have ever experienced this, you know, 
you will hear a lot of people hate on the guys that just wear vests and, you know, those half dome helmets and a lot of people, it's unfortunate, but a lot of people who are all about all the gear all the time, they are kind of judgy towards the people who don't do it, I found, you know, and usually the guys that just wear t-shirts and tank tops and shorts and flip-flops, you know, they're not really judging the people that wear the gear all the time, but the other way around, I, I find that that's not the case. Um, and maybe there are some obvious reasons for that. But anyways, before I get too much off topic, my point is just even riding with the shield up and just cruising around town and having the air in your face, it's so freeing. It's so, uh, the experience is just so much nicer. Of course, it's not very sustainable because once I reach higher speeds, the wind is just drying up my contacts. And, um, you know, it's, it's kind of uncomfortable, but when I'm cruising around downtown, I, on a, especially on a beautiful day like this, I'll just put the shield up and you'd be surprised how much of a difference that makes. Cause when the shield is down, you're very enclosed, you know, your head is where a lot of your senses are and y your body gets a lot of its positioning and its awareness through your senses in your head. And once you close that out, it's essentially like being in a padded bubble, an insulated padded bubble. And the, you know, the sound is different and it's just, it's a different experience. So just lifting that shield up and exposing your face, it just makes a lot of difference and cruising around on a beautiful day. It's just, it's really nice. So if you guys haven't experimented with that, I highly recommend it. You know, I don't recommend it on maybe like a road with a lot of bugs. Maybe you'll end up eating some gnats or something like that, getting something nasty up your nose. But on a nice day, just cruising under 40 miles per hour, it's definitely quite the experience. So definitely wanted to share that. And I wanted to see if you guys had any experience with that. Just cruising, guys, just cruising. I've, I've also learned for me, riding in general, I have the advantage of having 16 years of driving under my belt and you know that's a lot I think you know even if you're no matter if you're Pee Wee Herman or Stephen Hawking 16 years is a lot of experience right it is and just being on the road and knowing drivers and knowing myself as a driver and knowing certain situations and you know times when I've honked at people and times when people have honked at me, times when I've accidentally cut people off and people have accidentally cut me off. It's just you kind of get to know how drivers are. Even this morning, I was I was going into work. I had to um, actually do something physical. Every now and then, everyone's working from home. And, you know, for the most part, they're just remote connecting into their computers. But every now and then, a human touch is required. And I have to go into the office to physically touch a computer. And I was doing that today. I didn't feel like taking the motorcycle because it was abnormally chilly this morning, which which is partly why it was abnormally beautiful in the afternoon because it was abnormally chilly in the morning. But I digress. I was in the car and this Camry was drifting into my lane and I was like, okay. So I was just aware of it, you know, not honking or anything, just kind of aware. The tire was on the center line. So definitely uncomfortable, but she wasn't drifting any more than that. So I was just like, I'll let it go. I'm going to, I'm going to move over a little bit. I'm going to pass her. And usually in this situation in my head, I'm thinking, okay, it's either someone texting on their phone or it's a really old person. Right? So I'm curious to see, I'm curious, I'm curious, I'm curious. I'm driving past her. I turn my head and it's an old lady. She must've been 98 years old. She must've been older than dirt guys. And just a sweet old lady with her mask on, you know, very close to the steering wheel in the typical senior citizen posture. Just she could barely keep her eyes open, though. And I, I just I laughed out loud because it was just cute and it was funny. And, you know, you can't be mad at that. And, you know, that, so I was right. It was either someone texting or an old lady. In this case, it was an old lady. But my point is that especially on a motorcycle, I've learned that you you have to leave your emotions at the door. You know, you cannot afford to be angry. You cannot afford to be annoyed. You cannot af afford to be pissed off. I know that's the first instinct when somebody cuts you off or somebody's drifting into your lane and they don't see you, but honestly, they just don't see you. And no matter what, even, even if you can imagine they see you and they're just being an asshole, right? And they're drifting into your lane. It does not behoove you one bit to lose your cool. Okay. First of all, I've seen videos of guys getting mad and trying to kick the car and they lose balance in their motorcycle and just end up looking like a complete tool. But that's not really the reason why it's for your own benefit to stay calm. When I think about successful motorcycle riding, I think about seeing the road as the football field and you are the quarterback, right? And, you know, you're just seeing everyone's position and seeing what kind of plays you have and kind of monitoring and, and what kind of play that you're going to run is depending on where your players are at in the field and how fast they're going and whether they're open or not, right? And the certain conditions. And you really have to just 
see the field as one and also anticipate people's actions and just be able to take the slightest clues, you know, the pace that a car is going, whether the car is kind of tailgating somebody and kind of, you know, you've seen them make these sudden movements going in and out of the lane. So that's someone to keep your eye on, right? Because they might, they might cut into your lane because they're obviously might be in a hurry or they might be kind of impatient, right? People going slow, maybe look into their car and notice their head positions, right? Or do they seem like they're, they're lost or they're scanning the streets looking for something, right? Maybe they're on their phone. So they're kind of unsure of where they are. You know, you got to keep that in mind too. So use all the clues you have available to you to make the right decisions. But the reason that I say that you need to keep a calm and level head and not get annoyed even when drivers are doing stupid things is because just like a quarterback on the field, you know, he doesn't beat himself up. He doesn't get angry. He doesn't get frustrated. You know, you have to stay calm in order to make your best decisions. In order to perform at your peak, you have to stay calm and level-headed. You cannot afford to let your emotions get the best of you, right? Calm, cool, collected. Then you're going to take the best route, even without thinking, because then your, your mind is just not going to be clouded with all this negative energy. So guys, if that's one thing I can tell you new riders, coming from a new rider, coming from someone with 16 years of driving experience, right? It's, it's, that carries on to the car too. You really have to say, stay calm. You have to understand where people are coming from, you know, especially on the motorcycle. You've been in the car. You've cut people off before, you know, you've been cut off before. You've been late for work before, you know, you've been distracted before. It's really nothing worth getting angry about, especially when you're on a motorcycle. The stakes are so high that if you get angry and your mind is in this cloudy state where you're not able to react you know, efficiently and appropriately and just natural flow state, right? Being in that natural flow state, you know, you can't be there when you're all angry and annoyed and pissed off. So stay calm, guys. Just analyze the field. Get a good feel of different behaviors and different types of drivers and just notice the small little details. Soak up all the little details, right? So that's what I have for you there that was the main thing. That's really all I wanted to talk about. I wanted to share my helmet and then this kind of quarterbacking, staying calm scenario. I think you'll go a long way. I mean, just me within my first eight months of driving, I can't tell you how many people have drifted into my lane and not see, not seen me. And, you know, the motorcycle's pretty small and the lane's pretty large. So most of the time you can get away with just scooting over. And as long as you are right next to them, they'll eventually see you. But in some situations, you know, you're not going to be able to, to drift away and you're going to have to have a, a greater awareness to the more information you have available to you, the better decisions that you can make on the fly. And, you know, it's just, I take responsibility for everything. I always assume that nobody sees me, that everyone's going to cut me off, that everyone's here to, you know, get me into an accident, right? The, the, the quarterback analogy fails in this situation is because you don't have blockers when you are a motorcycle, right? You have no one looking out for you. You have to be your own blocker and you have to, you know, analyze the field. So you have to do it all by yourself. And, you know, I take full responsibility because I want, when, when someone drifts into my lane, I don't think, oh man, you're, you're a dickhead. You're an asshole. Learn how to drive. I just think, okay, what could I have done better in that situation? Did I see it coming? You know, of course you're going to have that 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 situation when it's completely random and this guy is just moving over two three lanes just unexpectedly just crazy stuff like that that's not that's not very normal that's rare i would say what's kind of typical is people just drifting they don't see you and they're just casually moving into the lane i think that'll happen a lot that's happened to me numerous times already and i just i try to take responsibility for that to see what i can do to improve my visibility and to just ride a lot more defensively to just reduce the amount of possible incidents, right? There will always be an ideal situation for you to ride. No matter three lanes, four lanes, two lanes, if you analyze the road and the cars that are in your immediate vicinity, behind you, in front of you, next to you, there will always be an ideal place to be and an ideal speed to be going depending on you know, if there are pedestrians, what the flow of traffic is like, what does the traffic look ahead of you? What does the traffic look behind you? There's just so many variables and if you can get better at just playing the field and just having that, you know, that general awareness of the things going on around you. It's, it's, it's a balancing act for sure between enjoying yourself and trying to pay attention, especially in the beginning, riding the motorcycle, you know, feeling the clutch, making these perfect shifts, you know, when to give it throttle and exactly that point to let go of the clutch. You know, it's, it's a lot. It's a very sensual, visceral, visceral experience. And 
you know, I it, I think that it shouldn't be taken lightly, but it is very fun when you embrace that this is a challenging task. It's a very rewarding experience, and you look at it as such. You know, embrace this as a huge learning experience, and get to know your bike, get to know other drivers, get to know the streets around you. Right? It's it's just soaking it all up. The more that you feel like you have to learn, the better off you'll be. It's the person that thinks he knows everything. That's the kind of person that I'm scared for. The guy that thinks he knows everything and loves to just roll on the throttle and go 120 miles per hour. I fear for that guy's mother, right? Because that guy might be in the hospital. But if you just become a student of everything and just don't blame other people and just take responsibility for your own ride and get to know your own motorcycle, it's a very intimate relationship that you're going to have with this motorcycle. The clutch and the engagement point, the friction point, how the throttle feels, what it feels when it's wide open, what it feels like when you roll off the throttle to downshift, right? What it feels like to lean it, when it feels heavy, when it feels light. Get to know this motorcycle like she's your soulmate, like you're going to spend the rest of your life with her, right? So that's all. Wow, I didn't expect this video to go this long, guys. I'll try to get some footage. It's going to be boring footage, but hopefully the podcast, hopefully the voiceover was cool. Hopefully you felt like we had a cute little conversation here. I'm just sharing my beginner's thoughts with you guys, and I really appreciate you guys sticking around, tuning in. I truly know nothing, but I'm I'm sharing my experience as a brand new rider, and I know there are a lot of brand new riders out there who just maybe it, it's comforting to know what other people are going through. You know, it's cool that you're not you're not in it alone. There are a lot of people out there in the same situation. A lot of you guys out there riding CBR 500 hours. I'm loving it. We're all a part of this community together. It's amazing the opportunities that YouTube has provided us. And uh, I look forward to making more content. Thank you for tuning in, guys. I'll see you very, very soon.